Ubuntu, like most other Linux distros, is built primarily off of FOSS. This means that they have all manner of licenses they have to deal with. One such class being the GPL style licenses. And most of you probably know these come with requirements regarding the distribution of source code. Now Ubuntu, like most distros out there, isn't necessarily always just taking the source code from upstream, then compiling it and shipping that. Sometimes they're making additional changes, cherry picking patches, backporting security fixes and things like this. So what they should be doing is offering the source code for the packages that they are distributing. And this is exactly what they do. One such way they try to achieve this is by offering source based ISO images. These are different from the regular ISOs you would download. Instead of just only having the application binaries, these include the source code for all of the packages on the system. But it looks like this particular offering may be going by the wayside. However, before we get to that, you're probably thinking, I didn't know Ubuntu even offered these. Where in the world do I go to find it? Well, let's have a look. So if you're anything like me, you're probably going to check the main Ubuntu download page, Download Ubuntu Desktop. And if we scroll all the way down, there's not going to be anything useful on the page. Okay. But it's not the main thing people download. So maybe it's going to be under the alternative download section. That would still make a lot of sense. We'll scroll all the way down. We have the network installer. We have BitTorrent. We have some other images and mirrors. We'll go there in a moment. And no source code. And this page isn't actually very helpful. It's just other mirrors to download the binary ISO. So let's try a whole nother website. Now we've moved away from the marketing website and are directly on the releases page. Okay, let's see if we get somewhere from here. It is a bit confusing. We have three Mantic folders, 23.10.1, 23.10, and Mantic. I don't know why, which has made it all the more confusing because if we actually go to these individual pages, I think they take you to the same page. So... I feel like there's a bit of, you know, cleanup that can be done here to more streamline the system. Regardless, as they take you to the exact same page, they all have the exact same content. And none of that content is the source-based ISO images. It turns out we need to go to a whole nother website. That being cdimage.ubuntu.com. This is a page that you've probably gone to like once to find something it doesn't even have a graphical landing page it is just a file server also it's a little bit confusing to navigate like it seems is the case for all of the ubuntu architecture we have a mantic folder we have a releases folder we have an ubuntu folder we also have a source folder maybe that's the one we need turns out it actually is even though you think you should, you don't want to go into the Mantic folder. This does have a source folder. It's just empty. So, that's not very useful. Instead, if we go to source, then the release of Mantic, then source, now we finally have something useful. There is another option. We go releases, and then either Mantic or 23.10, once again, either is going to work. Then we go to release, this is not the page we want to be on. This has the regular binary ISOs. Instead, we want to go to source, and now we're where we want to be. These are the source ISOs for different versions of 23.10, but they are both what we are talking about today. Now that we are here, do you see the first problem? Nobody is downloading them if nobody can even find where they are. There's not a direct link on the download website. You have to go and navigate this stupid file server, and unless you desperately, desperately need them, nobody's gonna do that. Second problem is uh, how big they are. It is not a single ISO. There is six separate images. So, you know, it's a little bit inconvenient to use them. Now I've seen my audience breakdown, I know what somebody's gonna say. Oh, back in the 90s, I installed Debian on 67 floppy disks. 
good for you, but we've moved a little bit past doing that. Now, the reason we're even discussing this being abandoned is thanks to this email by Michael Hudson Doyle on the Ubuntu mailing list, discontinuing source ISOs. Hello, release team. In the course of recent refactorings of Ubuntu CD image slash Debian CD, we somehow broke the building of source ISOs. I doubt this is anything very deep and can surely be fixed, but there is another option. Stop building source ISOs. As far as I understand, the point of the source ISO is GPL compliance. If you're hosting an ISO made of GPL components, you should also host the source of those components. However, we put ISOs on CD image, e.g. that link we went to just before, not releases, the page that you know, actually gets use. So everyone who mirrors the Ubuntu ISOs for us does not mirror the source ISOs. That's the other thing. That's the only place they can be found. There are no official mirrors. As our mirror operators have been working this way for approximately 20 years without issue, perhaps it's time to stop making source ISOs and delete even more code from Debian CD and Ubuntu CD image. Now the idea here isn't to do away with offering the source code. We're not doing a red hat thing here. The source code is still going to be accessible, just not accessible through this means. So this right here is the Ubuntu packages website. If we go to the Mantic section and I don't know, click editors and then click, I don't know, Apple. I have no idea what this is. And then scroll down a little bit, download source package for this package here. And everything is available. And this is the case every single package that has source code available. Obviously for the proprietary packages that can't be done, but everything where it can be done, it is done. Now, in a lot of other threads, there's usually a lot of bike shedding and arguments and discussion about whether something should actually be done. In this case though, it seems mostly unanimous to do away with this project. Here is a follow-up comment from Steve Langasek. As you know, I'm a fan of this. In principle, source images are useful for ensuring the distributors of our install images are complying with the terms of the GPL. But this is only true if they're actually distributed together, or if the source image is somehow useful for a distributor to rely on for the written offer option under the GPL. As you point out, the image files are not being distributed together. Mirrors of releases.ubuntu.com don't get the source ISOs, and where community flavors are running their own mirrors, as far as I know, they aren't including the source ISOs, so if they're not being distributed together, the ISOs are no better than pointing at the apt archive for source. And we ourselves long ago stopped distributing physical CDs, and I'm not aware of anyone else doing so, and if someone does, I think it's unlikely they are also distributing the source images on six DVDs. Now I know there are people selling physical install media for Linux distros like Debian, like Mint, presumably also Ubuntu. I do know there is one place selling physical DVDs, but I don't believe they are selling the Ubuntu source images. Regardless though, I don't know if anyone's actually buying them. Following this, we got a reply from Lucas. I basically plus one what Steve said. To add a bit more to this, the current source ISO machinery doesn't take snaps into consideration. And considering that Ubuntu nowadays is very snap heavy and a lot more things are being replaced with snaps, basically the source ISOs weren't actually doing the job that they were supposed to be doing. So the resulting ISOs weren't fully compliant anyway. So... If you're not going to do it properly, what's the point of doing it all together? But Ubuntu isn't just Ubuntu. We also have all of these community flavors, so it's very important to hear what they have to say as well. Well, one person did chime in here. Eric, I'm going to say Eekmeyer. This is the project lead of Ubuntu Studio and the technical lead of Edu Ubuntu. With my flavor lead hat on, as far as I know, there's not a single official community flavor that is running their own mirror. And since our images are in cdimage.ubuntu.com, the one that is not being mirrored, releases.ubuntu.com would be irrelevant anyhow. Every single one of our websites is pointing to our various pages or directly linked to the ISOs on cdimage.ubuntu.com, or which, as I understand, is not our own mirror. There are mirrors of cdimage.ubuntu.com out there, but those are not officially run by any community flavor. 
at least to my knowledge, and I would be extremely surprised if they were, I can say that they aren't run by Ubuntu Studio or Edge Ubuntu. However, yes, your assessment of not including the source ISOs to my knowledge is correct. That said, if there are source ISOs out there for the flavors, then I think the flavors should also have some say in this, as this makes each one of the official flavors stakeholders. That said, I preemptively have no problem with the discontinuance on behalf of Ubuntu Studio and Edge Ubuntu if they even exist. To make matters worse, the source ISOs probably weren't up to date anyway. We basically only build source ISOs once or twice every release cycle, so the machinery to do so is very much the opposite of well-oiled. After the 23.10.1 respin of the Ubuntu desktop images, I found the source ISOs appeared to have become unpublished, and I found it incredibly difficult to even work out the correct invocation of the commands that would allow me to republish the existing ISOs. Debian CD didn't even enter into it, I was just trying to drive Ubuntu CD image to republish the previously built images. Dropping the source ISO builds from the release process and not having to continue supporting them in the code would be very nice. There has been no official announcement about what's going to be done. It is entirely possible that going into 24.04 and 24.10 and 25.04 and long into the future that this stays around. But considering it broke, this is as good a time as any to think about, okay, is this something that we actually want to support? Is this something that anybody is using? Because it's not like they need it to be here to do the GPL compliance. They already offer the source code in other means. Do people actually need a full image of all of the packages available? Or are the other means we have in place suitable to get the job done? I'm not involved in the Ubuntu architecture team. I can't say what they need to do to get everything back up and working. But as it stands, it seems like they already have a system in place that does the job. And if nobody's using this one anyway, then does it really make sense to keep it around? Honestly, if anything, I would like the source code to be a little bit easier to access. Maybe have it on a GitLab so you can just easily clone everything. But besides that, if it's just a matter of do we keep this system or get rid of it... I think it makes sense to get rid of it, but let me know. Do you actually use the Ubuntu source images? And if you do, what do you use them for? I would love to know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, silly bear pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and Ubuntu.